is coming if you can make sure they can get through. Fire and Rescue this week, fighting the work of arsonists. New recruit Nathan learns the consequences of upsetting his colleagues and how fire prevention has entered the national curriculum. The watch that's been called to a house fire in Nuneaton is led by the ambitious acting sub-officer Mark Phillips. You can give that a quick squirt through the through the window now, Vince. Yeah, I know. Get on spray a bit. He's quick to begin directing operations. Yeah, we'll have one off once they've got that in. Just one length for set 45. The homeowner's son decided to spend his lunch break watching telly. When it started billowing smoke, he went to a neighbour's to ring for the fire brigade. Yeah, the house is empty. I prefer to be in charge. I'd just like to be the one doing the decision, so... Rather than being in there. Set out, right. Open the windows at the back. Do you want us just to check upstairs? Yeah, well, you might as well ventilate then. Is it all out? Yeah. Everything's. Can we use the PPV now? It's out. Is the back door open? Open the back door so we can get the draft through. Alright. Mm -hmm. I'll check the set again. Yeah? Alright, Phil. Pull the down here. Well, as soon as they've, I think it's safe, you'll come in and have a look, see what damage has been done. I'll, I'll give you a call. Yeah. The lad seems pretty chilled out about the whole thing. At the moment, he's in for a bit of a shock when he sees the devastation inside. Hmm. Anything <laughs> bringing in? Shovel or out? I'm afraid the lounge and kitchen is destroyed. But it could have been worse if you hadn't shut that door. <laughs> yeah, get that lad out the window there. Mark has been a firefighter at Nuneaton for 23 years. Today, he's on his way to an interview to try to make his temporary post of sub-officer a permanent position. A sub-officer job entails everything that when comes down to running a watch. Uh, he's in charge of the watch, sometimes in charge of the station, depending on what time of day or night it might be. Uh, he has to coordinate all watch activities, admin, uh, community fire safety, incidents, and he's obviously in charge of all the incidents that we initially turn out to. Water ladder, myself, Farmer Carlton, leading Farmer Smith, Farmer Pearson, Farmer Jones. Water tender. Uh, there's only one sub officer on a watch, whereas there's three leading firefighters. People used to say, I can remember talking to people years ago, and they say there's three positions that are good. Firefighter, sub-officer, station commander. Because you're always in charge of your own little bit. Firefighter doesn't have a lot of responsibility, but he's in charge of himself. Then the sub's in charge of the watch, and the station commander's in charge of the station. Have, have we got White Watch P10s on the computer? Yes. Where are they? Come on. Right. I have to do it I've got a lot of experience, confidence. I get on well with the people I'm working with, and I know what I'm doing nine times out of ten. I've been in the job 23 years. I'm still nervous of uh, attending these interviews. But hopefully it'll be um, a good nervousness, a nervousness that will help me concentrate and focus on, on the things that I'm trying to say, and, and hopefully I'll, I'll put them over correctly. That will be judged by three top brass during a gruelling interview here at Warwickshire's headquarters in Leamington. At the other end of the ladder is new recruit Nathan Stevens. He's just six months into the job. 
but his drill yard training is interrupted for the real thing. You get caught like this. Depends on I don't know what the job is. Uh, Dickie's just got the tip sheet, so. What we got, Dick? What we got? Woods. Where's it at, Dick? Nathan's been assigned to Blue Watch, who are doing everything they can to ensure the cocky ex-serviceman settles into their way of working. So, no, I think Nathan might better cope with that. Do you, do you be all that, Nathan? On very small fires, rather than connecting hoses, it's easier and quicker to put them out with a couple of buckets of water. If Nathan doesn't get that right, you're going to hit him over the head with that. And of course, who better to carry them oh, than the new it. boy? I tell you what, warms your face up after you've been sitting by that window. There's an hole in there, you best uh, have a walk back for some more. <laughs> Don't waste it, it's a long walk. What a shot. One gone already? One gone. Oh dear. Comes with a territory. <laughs> Just how I get all the best jobs, carrying the water and things like that. Down at HQ, it's a bit of last-minute revision before Mark's called Thank before you. the board. Thank you. Come in, take a seat. Thank you. Mark, you didn't undo your jacket or even take it off if you so wish. Please make yourself feel comfortable. So I'm going to ask you one question, and then the two, my two colleagues on my left and right are going to ask you two each. First question, then, is it in 1999 and 2000, the Home Office set targets relating to the appointment of women and people from ethnic minority groups into the fire service. Could you tell me what targets were set? The fire service really should represent the community that it serves. It should be a broad family of um, people in the fire service, and at the moment it isn't. It's mainly white male orientated, and it's a culture that's got to change. We need to represent the, the commu community, and at the moment we don't. Mm. Um, the area you, you've, you've looked at is specifically recruiting. There mm -hmm. were three other areas, two, two main areas and a sub-area that they wanted, they specifically set targets for. Recruitment was one of them, you're absolutely yeah. right. Do you know what the others were? Targets of um, promotion. Yep. So we've got promotion, recruitment and further development. Um, could you describe to us your understanding of the integrated personal development system? Is it um, to do with um, training, linking everybody to in the service to identify needs, training to like appraisal side of it, benefits to the individual from going through training, um, linking it to the service plan? Am I on the right lines? Back at the station, Blue Watch are preparing a comeuppance for their probationer. Well, Nathan, who has been on the station about six months now, seems to think that he can play with the grown-ups. He's already upset the sub by playing practical jokes on him. And it's revenge time. And in all true traditions of the fire service, you get more back than what you give out. Yep. While he's away on holiday, Nathan's locker is going to get a makeover. Normally, we wouldn't sort of uh, pick on a probationer and sort of this early on, but sort of give him sort of 18 months to settle in, but he's took, he's took things a bit too serious straight away. I mean, a stink bomb in the sub's car. Well, in the sub's wife's car. Cannot go unpunished. Yeah, if this doesn't cover part very easy, yeah, when Nathan comes back on duty, I think it uh, could be interview without coffee, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, when he was in the RAF, that used to be his trademark, leaving stink bombs everywhere. And the sub didn't see the funny side of it. Oh, well, his wife did <laughs> when they had to drive home in the pouring rain with all the windows open. <laughs> God, is this to make sure that we're all there? Uh... Very good, thank you very much. Thank I do all. appreciate it. <laughs>
Yeah, I'm not doing that to me again. Fully. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, payback time. It's only a probation. I won't say only a probation. It's not probation, but it's a probation. It's just not. Probation's not do that to some officers. Firefighters. Or leading firefighters. Do that. Untouched by human hands. Well, thank you very much, Mark. Have you got any questions you'd like to, to ask the panel? I would like to be able to say a couple of things that might uh, yeah, be ahead. a benefit to myself, try to sell myself, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, uh, as you're all aware, anyway, I've been a temporary sub officer on Greenwatch at Nuneaton since November the 1st, so it's just over four months. And as, as far as I'm aware, from feedback I've had from station commander, I've done a good job. Now, a couple of things that came to mind after I'd been in Greenwatch just for a couple of weeks was they had a, a really bad sickness level. So I took it on myself to, well, I monitored this and checked up on the, on the dates, on the amount of time that they'd had off. So in the four months, I'm only going to compare the four months previous to the four months that I've been doing. The four months previous, they had over 100 days sick, sick leave on Greenwatch alone in four months. So I made it plain, I had them all in. I said, I'm not going to stand for this um, booking sick just to guarantee PHs and this, that and the other, and I can't physically stop them. And I told them I was going to monitor the situation and this, that and the other, just to let them know that I was on the case. And it seems to have had some success, because uh, uh, the last four months, compared to the 100 before, the four months I've been charged, uh, it's dropped to 30. Okay. So apart from that, a little bit of trying to sell myself. I noticed from Peter somewhere you've only done half of the Watch Commander course. I've done half the Watch, yeah. And why is that? Well, I was ill for the second one. Right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The open grassland which surrounds Nuneaton is a constant source of irritation for the firefighters. Oh, mad dog. Oh! Yeah, radio. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah, go. Yeah, it's got up there, uh, info's off Acacia Road. That's up on the right hand side, isn't it? I can see it. Definitely stronger up here, isn't it? It's definitely st smells stronger up here. The kids have just broken up from school and calls to deliberate grass fires are starting to escalate. Exactly the same as yesterday. Ash, can you come round a bit further, just to where the bollards are? Okay. Do you want me to uh, launch them up from here? Ada's coming down to have a look. I don't think we get those real up here. Probably um, kids, I should imagine. Going to a similar sort of fire yesterday. Of course, we've had quite strong winds recently, and uh, it's just dried everything out so quick. Uh, even though the ground camp, the tops are quite dry, so it just drives along the tops of the bushes. You know, which you don't expect for when we've had this sort of uh, weather recently. It's the biggest pain of our job. I mean, much as we like the job that we do, and all right, get a sad satisfaction from putting out fires, the last thing we want to do would be bloody messing around, chasing after a bushfire that some little arsehole set fire to, when they've got boards, nothing else to do, in the school holidays. What's that over there? They set fire to it again. This one started after we got here. I'm actually putting that other length on. Anything about this to you, lads? You sure you don't know who's been doing this? No, I don't know. That's good then. It's very dangerous and it puts me and my crew in a dangerous situation. War on, Bash! Try and get a jet into that. Make sure you give the edge the proximity of it good spray. All At the end of the day, every time we're going out to one of those, it's stopping us from going to a proper fire if someone really needed us. 
and that's the biggest thing that pisses off, I think. I know I got some of the questions quite good and some not so good. It's difficult to judge their reactions. Um, they obviously won't tell me yet, so I'll just have to wait and see. Yeah, as far as I could see, you've got the pat answer, if you like, but not an actual under, mm. underpinning yeah. answer to it. So again, I was looking at about three for that one. Okay. And they'll be all adding up their marks and discussing between themselves how they think I've done. I think I did better on some questions. Well, I certainly did better on the operational side than the fire safety side, so. Well, I think Term used a scattergun approach. He, he picked up some things and threw them into the pot in case they were relevant. I'm not sure he understood, you know, understood the concept. Probably expect touch wood that I've passed the board, but in what position, I don't know. He did reasonably well, but he, he's failed the board, the criteria that we've set. Um, um, and, and I think it's to do, in some ways, that about a broader knowledge and a broader, uh, a broader look outside of the station he's serving on at the moment and the discipline that he's in at the moment. Fingers crossed. Another turnout, another needless job. We have a grass fire, we've got quite a windy day, so it's, it's developed and the wind's pushing it further and further apart. What we're trying to do now is just uh, get to the far side of it where the wind is the strongest to try and uh, stop, the, stop it from going any further. I always try to talk to the kids who we think do like these fires, but I try and explain to them that if it was their house and their mother and their what's it, but today's climate, they just laugh at you and just take the sod off virtually. But the next call Greenwatch receives is to help a group of local youngsters. They had been building a den for the summer holidays, but they've fallen victim to someone who's come along and torched it. The children rush to see if the firefighters can save their hard work. Got a little den down there. Yeah. Is it your little den down there, is it? Is it? OK. Everyday occurrence. Sort of the uh, bread and butter of our job, really, I suppose. You know, it could spread all the way down here, but normally they're just little ones. The fire's out, but the den's destroyed. It's a sad society, actually, if you look at it. We go back a few more years, and yeah. you used to respect things, but not anymore. Wires from 201, in attendance, Beverly Avenue, 201 over. Didn't you do it when you were a kid? Had a few fires, called a fire brigade out. I think we all did it, didn't we? That's three, isn't it, today now? In a row. The number of deliberate fires set by children in Nuneaton has been growing steadily year on year. As a response, fire prevention talks in schools now form a big part of each watch's daily duties. And fire safety has now been incorporated into the national curriculum. We do a lot with children, our chance to educate children. Children seem to take it in really well and obviously they enjoy the fire service coming to visit them at schools. What sort of things do you think cause fires? If you get a match and you put it on fire and you drop it by accident. Right, matches start fires and lighters. Have you seen cigarette lighters, have you? Yeah. Yeah. And also the children are educating brothers and sisters, which at the end of the day, can only help everybody. Cocky took Francis back to his hiding place. There, to her surprise, was a box of matches, just as she was above... A specially made cartoon warning about the dangers of playing with matches ensures that these five-year-olds are a captive audience. And it was only a matter of minutes before the whole forest was burning. It's good in a sense, but in another way, you can't make people listen to what you say. That's why we're still getting the car fires, the hedge fires, Matches, matches, never touch. They can hurt you very much. So hopefully the message is starting to get across and hopefully within another four or five years' time it'll be outgrown one lot of youths and the area where we've been covering the community fire safety will actually see a decrease in malicious and deliberate fires. 
quite rewarding as well because we, we, we do year one and then we catch them again in year five and it's surprising how much they automatically come back extra that they remember from what we did on year one. So I think we're getting the message across and that's what it's all about. Only time will tell whether this type of community fire safety will reduce the number of deliberate fires. The bad news has been broken to Mark by the station commander. Because he's worked at Nanink for so long, he's had 23 years on the same fire station, he doesn't always see the wider views. And we need to make sure that he can open up his eyes and look at the, uh, the different things going on within the service. And it may be that we'll offer him a, an opportunity to work in, a, in another department so that he gets a, a greater depth of knowledge of how the other departments work. I feel a bit demotivated at the moment, as you could expect. That, um... I should just have to pick myself up and carry on. It's Nathan's first day back from holiday. Must have been more than one for that though. Must have been more than one. I think uh, I was a bit out of my depth. <laughs> 